Mons, I have a question that might be worth a discussion video. Let's take a scenario where player A and player B are both presenting a guaranteed win on their turn. Player C has no way to stop either of them, and player D only has one counterspell. It is player A's turn. Does player D use his counterspell on player A, knowing he will just lose to player B, basically king making for player B, or does he do nothing and let player A win, knowing he would lose to player B anyway, basically king making for player A? This situation is actually very common and it's like a yes and no, there's no real answer to it, you're basically king making no matter what you're doing here. There are many variations to this scenario and I think everyone has been in it in one occasion or more. And therefore I think it's a very important topic too. But it's also a topic that doesn't really have a yes or no right or wrong answer. You're king making basically whatever you're doing here. You can either interact with player 2's Ad Nauseum and I just realized that Ad Nauseum is probably a bad example here because the right thing to do here is to hope that the Ad Nauseum fizzles and you don't interact. But let's say that there's an one, let's say there's a different combo up there that let's say a Fazas Consult combo instead in, on player 2. But I, I think you understand what I'm trying to see here is that player 2 is presenting a 100% guaranteed going to win. Player 3 here, the one behind here, is also representing a 100% going to win as well. And you're going to king make one of these two, whatever you're doing here. Let's say you've even get and probe both of them somehow and you know that you're going to see this. Oh, well, in this scenario, you only need to get and probe player 3 and then you pass turn and player 2 is suddenly going for it and you know it's over. There's even a social contract that exists in some playgroups that say that you have to counterspell the Ad Nauseum at hand. You are obligated to do it because that is playing to your out, even though there isn't an out. You're going to pass turn to an imminent death from player 3 here. Because here is something really important to know, like you have to know this. It doesn't matter to who you're losing. Player 2 or player 3, player A or player B, it doesn't matter. Losing is losing. There's no third or fourth place, there's only second place. There's also a famous quote that goes, winning is winning. It doesn't matter if it's by an inch or a mile. So whatever you do here, it's a loss. And whatever you do here, you're king making someone. I've actually been in this situation so many times that I'm actually playing stacks cards as my main control cards to control the game because I've learned that counter spells just doesn't get there in situations like this and, and this situation is very common. But I'm also a very political person and I theory craft a lot outside the box of how I am going to solve this situation. So I have a political thing that I do. I have a force of will. I reveal it to player 3. And I say that I am going to use my force of will to counterspell player 2 if player 3 Promise me to not w try to win on his turn. Basically draw a card, maybe put a land in play. We can negotiate a little bit about what player 3 is also allowed to do. But then pass the turn. Never putting Undual Breach onto the stack. This is giving me another turn cycle. I get my turn back. I get to draw a card. Hopefully draw into some more interaction versus players 3 next upcoming turn. Deals? In competitive magic? In CEDH? That isn't allowed. Dislike video immediately. Well, you are allowed to communicate and make deals in EDH. We can have all forms of different opinions of what we like about it, but it is allowed. So player 3 now has two options. Number one, he could refuse the deal. In this case, if he refuses the deal, I am now letting the Ad Nauseum resolve. Then because I know I'm going to lose, so I'm not presented a potential out here. So I might as well lose because in the end, losing to player 3 or losing to player 2 doesn't matter to me here. The second option is that player 3 
agrees to the deal. And in this scenario, player 3 doesn't lose. And if you're gonna talk about playing to your outs, the obvious choice here is for player 3 to kind of more or less, depending on all the possible circumstances, take the deal. Because not taking the deal resolves in imminent loss. Taking the deal prolongs the game, right? So player 3 takes the deal and I use my force of will on the ad nauseum. We now go to player 3 and now player 3 has two choices again. Break the deal or uphold the deal. If player 3 upholds the deal, we pass turn and turn goes another circle and player 3 can try to win again on its next turn or player 3 breaks the deal. I mean, why agree to something silly like not win the game? Of course I'm gonna win the game. Who cares? I lied to you, player one. I'm winning the game. If player three does this, player one, me in this case, will learn something about player three and basically never make a deal with player three again. In Magic, in CDH, even if it's over webcam with various people online over the entire world, you usually play with the same people over and over. Sure, you won this game, but what about next game? And next game? And next game? I don't care what you're saying. CDH isn't supposed to be with deals. We're playing Magic, cards, use your cards. Play the game, use your counterspell and counterspell that thing. Well, I'm not denying your way of playing the game however you want to. You can play it however you want to, that's fine by me, but I'm also allowed to play the game however I want to. And if you don't want to make this deal, then that's fine. We will both lose together and move on, I guess. Remember what I just showcased, that both sides are equally right here. Both sides has an equal right to play the game however they want to, because there isn't a set in stone on how CDH should be played and that's kind of what we're talking about here. On the other hand, I think if we ask the rules committee on what they think, I'm just gonna guess that they would side with player one trying to make a deal here and being okay with deals happening inside the game. In the end, what we're kind of doing here with the king making and making deals is transforming CEDH into something of Game of Thrones. And some people like that and some people dislike that. And that is why this is a very important topic because we need to talk about what CEDH should be so everyone is feeling happy around the table on how things are executed. I am not happy. I am supposed to win. Player 1 is supposed to counterspell Ad Nauseum and then I am gonna win. Winning should happen because of skill, not because of random seeded turn order. If things were reversed, then the other person would win and would just because you were seated in different positions. You can also argue that politics, discussions and like making deals with people isn't a skill. In the end, a lot of things is considered a skill. It more or less comes down to what you like and what you dislike. I absolutely know that there's a lot of people out there that really disliked what I'm saying now. Like, I don't like that there's deals. I want people to play magic and use their skill in magic to win the game. And that is an opinion. And there's nothing wrong with that opinion. That is a valid opinion and you're absolutely right to have that opinion. And it's just a player preference. It's what people enjoy and pe what people don't enjoy. And that is why certain playgroups can have social contracts of sorts so that you can have that experience that you're looking for. But if we're talking about trying to really solve this situation, trying to play to or out, I think after a lot of experience being in this specific situation that trying to make a deal, trying to solve it with a political discussion is honestly the only way that I found that is playing to an out. And also in the end being the only action that doesn't king make. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like what I do and you wanna support me, feel free to share my videos or even checking out my Patreon page. Also, purchasing cards from the TCG Players website using the affiliate link in the description below of the video will also help the channel grow. 
So a big thank you to all of you.